Hello everyone, welcome to episode 54 of this awesome, amazing Osu Let's Play series. In the last episode, we talked about MindBlock and the random mod that exists in Laser. And in this episode, I want to talk about speed training and also what is known as rate changing, which is basically changing the speed of the map to a speed aside from just you know double time or half time. So we get into that and specifically with some features that exist in Osu Laser. But before I get into that, I'd like to shout out as usual that I live stream every single day over at twitch.tv. So that will be linked in the description. But if you wanna hang out with me or watch me play this game live, ask me questions, anything like that, I'd be very happy if you stop by, say hello. And bonus points also, if you tell me that you came from this Let's Play series, we'll be very, very happy to see you there. So. I have a couple maps picked out, and also as usual, so speed is one of those things I really touched on in a lot of detail, and also more structured detail in what's called OCPHD, which I will have linked up here. But definitely, if you have not seen that video, please, please watch it first. This video is going to be more about like speed training and I guess some um, tips that I might personally be able to give you guys. And I also want to talk specifically about the rate changing feature that exists in Laser. So. Uh, I showed this off in the first episode about laser, but basically if you go to the mods, then there's this, so, okay, obviously double time, right? But there's this customization button where you can change the speed in increments of 0 0.01. And this also changes the, you know, obviously it scales the approach rate and, you know, all the other settings that typically get scaled as well, accuracy or OD and HP. And you can even scale it faster than DT typically is all the way up to 2.0. And... That, I think, so there's some external programs that exist. Um, I think Fun Orange's OC Trainer is the most popular one, um, where you have an external program and you can, you know, rate change uh, whatever map. And there's also some other programs like MikOSU that's basically a separate OSU practice client. But OSU Laser has all those features built in and it's actually the official client. So in, in my mind, you might as well just use OSU Laser because there are lots of really nice quality of life features as well. But, okay, so along with double time, there's also this mod called difficulty adjust. And this is where you can change all the four difficulty settings of the map and also click on extend limits. So extend limits. So, okay. So typically it just goes up to 10, but extend limits allows you to go all the way up to 11. So putting OD 11 and then also having DT on top of that is actually something that's possible. So you can go up to like OD I guess this might be like OD13 or something like OD12. I don't, I don't even know. It's crazy fast. Okay. <laughs> crazy hard. But uh, yeah, so if you, for example, only want to work on tapping speed or like very dense speed, then that is something you can do. Just turn the AR down. And uh, actually, I might, I might change, turn the AR down. Typically, I use like a special skin for DT, but I don't know if I have it on laser. Um, oh, wait. I think I do. I think it's this one. I'm pretty sure. Is it? So it should have like a blue cursor. Wait, let me, let me check. Oh, wait, no, this is my old, old skin. Uh, okay, never mind. I'll, I'll just, I'll just rate change. It's fine. It's fine. No, nobody, no, no, nobody's flaming me for not being able to read 10.3 without a different skin, right? <laughs> but, all right, a couple of things about speed training. So, in a very general sense, people, I think, often ask, oh, how can I get better at playing speed, right? Like, my speed is bad, everything else is good. Um, how do I get better at that? Um, <laughs> first tip is to not lag. <laughs> TBH, but okay, let's see. I think just for one, you need to figure out where you currently stand in your speed abilities. And that is, I think, typically done by, hmm. I think just trying a couple maps or like, honestly, I think sorting by BPM is really, really helpful for speed training because speed is so BPM oriented. I think the main aspect of speed is definitely the BPM. Why is it so quiet? Why is it so quiet? I'm trying to be able to think, but also I want you guys to be able to hear the song. So I think a huge part of speed. Okay, I've talked to another player named Matrix about this, and this is more about stamina, but he said that stamina is really just defined as like how long you can maintain your tapping technique um, or how long you can maintain your technique rather than, you know, some sort of like physical limit. I mean, there is a physical limit, obviously, but it's, it's more about maintaining your technique than anything else, which actually makes a lot of sense. And I think it, it makes it a lot clearer to like gauge how you should go about training. And I think speed and stamina in that sense are very connected. I mentioned this in OCPHD as well, but speed, what is it? 
It's okay. It's, it's very physically like akin to like physical training, such as like weightlifting, working out, things like that. So the same concepts will apply, including like when to know, or, like how to know when to stop. Because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, oh, oh, gee, my hand hurts so much. It's speed. It's, I'm so fast, and then you just like keep playing. Like, oh, gee, this is so much fun because I'm so fast, and then you end up getting a hand injury or something like that. And uh, yeah, don't do that. <laughs> or maybe it's like, oh, gee, I'm so frustrated. I can't FC this map, but like, blah blah blah. I'm, I'm warmed up today. I want to get the score, and then um, you end up just playing too much and getting a hand injury, something like that. Um, knowing when to stop, and I guess something that I think is really important to. I guess emphasize is that the game will always be there for you. Literally, people have been playing this game for like like a trillion years. Like, when did this game come out? 2000. Okay, I think 14 years. I think maximum. But a lot of people have been playing for like personally, I've been playing for like seven years, um, seven years and like three months. So the game is always there for you. Those same maps that I played on day one are still there. Nothing has changed. So all right. This map is so good. I feel like I may have played this in a previous episode. I still have yet to make the sheet of like all the maps, but um, I'll do that at some point. Um, yeah, I think really knowing your limits and knowing when to stop. Those are like two very important um, aspects of speed training. And aside from that, okay, so let's talk a bit about tapping technique. Um, well, I guess I might go. Okay, so I'm going to go a bit more into technique efficiency probably in its own episode, but. Just for the sake of this episode, I want to talk about, I guess, like minimizing excess movement um, to some degree, because especially with tapping, you don't want to be like lifting your hand super high and you also don't want to be very, okay, actually with speed, you actually do kind of need to be a little tense, but not to the point where, okay, there's a difference between like being tense and being like, I guess, deliberate in, in like the way that you tap. Because you can be deliberate and like not tense at the same time. I think tense is to the point where like like your fingers aren't as flexible, I guess. Um, like if you just try keeping your hands still, and like, you can try this right now, right? Just like have your hand very still, and then try to just tense it up without moving it at all, and then try to have it as relaxed as possible. Okay, you know, like when you're getting um, what is it like? Okay, you know when you're getting your blood pressure checked, and it's like you have to keep your arm as relaxed as possible? That's sort of what I'm talking about. When when people talk about like keeping yourself relaxed, like as relaxed as possible, try to get as close to like that sort of relaxedness as possible, but you should still be able to um, be deliberate in the way that you tap. And I think that sort of... Hmm. Okay, hopefully that sort of makes sense. I think technique efficiency is actually like a large percentage and just like the way that you tap or just sort of your technique in general. It can even be your aim technique, but that actually plays a pretty big role, I feel like, in speed ability. But aside from that, it's really just a lot of pushing your limits and... it Okay, it's a very gradual process for one, but... and also... Um, your skill sort of comes and goes in like waves. Um, there's a video that it, th there's a video on YouTube of like Idki rambling about like improvement in this game, and uh, I'll, I'll link that in the description as well. But I would recommend checking it out if you're really interested in like nitty gritty of like all things OC improvement. Then probably it's a good watch if you haven't seen it before. But basically, like natural like rises and dips in your skill progression in this game. So yeah, hopefully. Let's see, I, I'm pretty sure that makes sense. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm try trying to think if there's anything else in that topic. Oh, okay, yeah. So, I guess j just regarding that. Okay, so one thing I would suggest is like having a collection of maps that you play. Um, oh, actually, in the episode named "What to Play," I think it was episode 26. Uh, don't ask me why I know that. I, I actually, if that's wrong, then um. That's that's a little odd, but yeah, the episode named "What to Play," where I talked about basically like, especially for skill cap pushing, having a collection of B ranks basically, um, and maps that you typically get B ranks on on like whatever skill that you're training, and then like keep pushing your limits on those maps to try to get an A rank. But I did elaborate on that in that episode, so definitely check that out. But yeah, let's see. I think. Hmm. Okay, one thing about speed is like, 
Okay, so actually, I want to talk about like, single tapping versus alternating, I guess. This is 6.8 stars. Can I play this right now while talking? I don't know. Um, I don't actually know how this map goes. I know the song, though. Okay, it's, it's probably fine. It's probably fine. Let me turn my volume up. Okay. So single tapping versus alternating. I think if you really want to have a very high skill cap when it comes to speed, then you're going to want to learn how to alternate. And I did talk about... I'm pretty sure I've talked about alternating before, but basically... Alternating, like full alternating comes down to having good finger control. And that is defined in OCP HD at least. It is defined as being able to start and stop patterns with either finger. So if you have one finger that you're more comfortable starting patterns with, then I would recommend learning how to start patterns with your other finger as well. Because it's going to help a lot with being able to full alt without getting thrown off. Although... It's also okay. It's perfectly okay to just single tap everything as well, because there like there are some insane speed players in this game that just single tap, right? But there's also insane speed players that alternate. And I think at a certain point, like a map like this, like are you really gonna be able to? <laughs> like okay, you, uh, the best way to put it is like you don't get bonus points for the single tapping. So if you're like ah, oh, I want to be able to single tap this map, OMG, it's so fast. But then it's like uh trolling <laughs> I think just learning to alternate and like learning the different types of alternating um especially I think tap stream alting uh which I discussed in oh my god I'm just like referencing all my other videos in this episode I feel like um but yes I have a couple of videos on the alternating styles and there's one let's play episode on it and then there's also like a separate video on um where I showed like sample footage from Cookie Z and Flying Tuna. So those will also both be linked in the description. But yeah, I think especially being able to tap stream alt, which is like a sort of deliberate yet continuous at the same time. Like you, how do, how do I describe it? It's like being loose, but it's being deliberate at the same time. I think that's really important, especially for like maps like these that are like super fast to aim. I think that is really important because you're not going to be fast enough, probably, um, with like tap alting. Or it's a lot easier to be fast enough. I'll put it that way. But, yeah, let's see. Oh, this map is insane. <laughs> 7.6 stars. Um, Okay, I'm going to turn it down a little bit, just so that I can also talk along at the same time. Okay. Uh, it doesn't change the star rating, by the way, I'm pretty sure. Oh, it does, it does. Okay, it used to not. And now when you rate change, you'll have to leave and come back. Uh, 6.84, 7.9. Okay, you know what? Okay, let's just do this. What BPM is it? Wait, 217. Wait, does it also change the BPM there? 217, 205. Oh, it does. Okay, let's turn it a little faster. What is considered fast? Okay, I think the answer to that is very dependent on your current abilities. Like, there's some people that's like 180 BPM, 190 BPM is like speed, right? <clears throat> Especially if you typically don't play double time. And honestly, I think I was in that boat as well a long time ago. Um, but, you know, as you improve, like, what is considered hard in this game is very relative to your own perceptions of difficulty, I guess. Um, or that's how I see it, at least. But let's see. Oh, I, I do want to talk about, okay, so like for skill cap pushing in particular, okay, so I mentioned that you should like practice like alternating, like be able to alternate in order to play speed. I think it's just like generally a good thing to be able to do. Ultimately, you can just like, if, if, you, if you just want to single type everything, then, you know, that's something you can do. But I do want to mention also that like, for pushing your limits, I think it's actually nice to practice single tapping with both fingers on like very fast stuff. Like push your single tap speed ability as well on like both fingers. Because if you can, because okay, I think it's just a little more straining and like it pushes your raw speed mechanics just a little more. Um, and also, you know, practicing tapping with your other finger, at least in my experience, is really, really helpful. So it, it's just a fundamental buff. It's a fundamental thing. But if you're able to tap with your other finger comfortably, or like start patterns with your other finger, then it's, I think, really, really beneficial. But, yeah, for, okay, so for warming up for speed practice, because I, I think, like, knowing how, like, how to get into a session when you want to practice speed is really, really important. Um, over anything else, I would suggest, like, doing some, like, stretches or, like, something to loosen up your fingers. So it could just be, like, really low BPM stuff um, that works for some people. Um, or just like 
hand wrist exercises. You can just Google hand wrist exercises for gamers and there should be a couple of YouTube videos out there you can follow along with, but I would suggest just doing something to warm up properly. Um, some people say that it actually helps them to play stuff that's faster than what they typically play because then it's sort of like a placebo effect and then like slower stuff becomes easier. Um, if that works for you, then okay, but I would still recommend at least stretching a little bit first because not being warm before you get into stuff like that is a pretty good way to injure yourself, um, to put it bluntly, so... Oh, okay, consecutive triples, look at this. If you can full alternate, these things are like so easy, so much easier than if you have to start them all with the same finger, at least in my experience. So, yes, full alt supremacy. Oh, look at these streams, crazy. Oh, shoot, I'm trying to turn the volume up, but you need to hold Alt. So on the stable client, I'm pretty sure you can just press the arrow keys. But there's like an option to make it so you don't need to press Alt. I think it's like disable scroll wheel during gameplay or something. There's like an option for that. But I think just it really just comes down to like practice a lot, push your limits a lot. And um, OK, OK, actually, OK, so going back to like <clears throat> how to actually carry through a speed training session. So after you warm up, I think just gra gradually go up in BPM and like push your limits. Try to find stuff that you can get high B ranks on and like keep challenging yourself on those maps until you can get an A rank consistently. Consistently, I think that's sort of the defining like characteristic of that you've, you're like comfortable enough on that map as far as like speed goes. And then at that point, you're probably better off just playing something else. But I would say, okay, let's see, I would say as you are getting into this session, like at the start of your session, as you're like starting to actually play speed stuff, sometimes it helps to like just take a pause for like three to five minutes between maps just to like settle out, you know, shake your hands out a little bit and make sure you're not hurting yourself. But basically there's a sort of like gradual like increase in like warmed upness throughout a session. Like at the start, you're sort of like not really feeling super warm. Or actually, it's, it depends on the day. Sometimes you like you get on and you're like super warm already, but then it sort of peaks at some point, and then it sort of goes back down again. And you sort of you start to feel a little fatigued. And um, once you get to like this part of the graph, if you sort of follow my cursor, um, you sort of start to get diminishing returns. Even if you were to keep playing, like you're not really getting much out of it. You're better off like resting for like a couple hours at least or probably wait till the next day and then um practice again and have another session because yeah and then also i think one other thing that i want to emphasize a lot is like resting is just as important as your actual practice <clears throat> so resting a lot i think like getting a good night's sleep between practice sessions or like if you keep like sleep depriving yourself like let's say you uh, just like stay up late doing whatever or like you don't get enough sleep and then you have to wake up early for school and then there's just this, this endless cycle where you just keep losing sleep then i would say make sure you like if you want to improve at any physical aspect rest is really what helps or honestly if you want to improve at anything the whole idea of rest is to i think help you get better at you know anything really so um yes definitely please get some rest if you are trying to train speed but ultimately i think just find a lot of and okay honestly I was going to say like find a lot of maps to train on, but with like these sorts of mods, you can honestly just take the same map and like you can use it for like years and like still find value out of it. Um, you can even use the random mod for even more variety in the maps. So uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I want to cover in this episode. I think there are obviously other speed related videos out there. So I sort of just wanted to briefly give my own take on how I think speed should be practiced, but Ultimately, it really just comes down to pushing your limits gradually and carefully in some sense as well. And uh, I'm pretty sure that's like the sort of general rule of thumb that I think other people give for speed as well. So hopefully no controversial thoughts in this episode. But uh, yeah, that's going to do it for today. Those of you watching in the future, please check out my YouTube channel because I upload every single day. And also, if you have suggestions for future episodes, do leave them in the comments because I do read all the comments on these episodes. But uh, yes, with that, see you guys next time.